So welcome back friends to part five. Part five, finally, of the top 50 tools that every man needs to have to get through life. Man, it's been tough. It's been pretty easy up to this point because I always had some wiggle room, but this is the last video. There is no more. I can't add anything else. So I've thought long and hard about it and I think I've narrowed it down. Now, if you're finding this video or jumping into the middle or finding this one, I will put uh, in the, I'll, be, I'll create a playlist and I'll, cr I'll put all five videos together in one motion picture length so you can watch it from start to end if you want to reference or get some ideas. This isn't the definitive answer. It's not the great best fit for everyone. It's an all around. And coming, I guess why I guess I would consider Consider myself qualified to even do this video is my dad was a general contractor, my grandfather was a mechanic. I grew up with kind of both sides of it, so I have a, a pretty good understanding and I've, I've worked with tools a lot. Not an expert, I'm a layman, but I have, I just, I've done a lot of it. So I'm, I'm bringing my experience mostly for young guys uh, who are trying to set up their kits. All right, so let's jump into it. Number, what is it, 40, 40, number 41? Now again, some of these things are kind of morphing into two, two things, but I just, it just, it's just the way it is. If you don't like it, do your own tool video. All right, a battery charger slash jumper cables. These are things that you have to have. You have to have jumper cables. Now, I, I think most of us, you know, that we've heard about kind of the, the sheepdog mentality. I, I really subscribe to that, meaning that we have a responsibility to our community uh, to lend a hand. And being of, um, of, of capable of having, you know, having the resources, you know, or ha like having a truck to pull someone out of a ditch or having the ability to keep some jumper cables in your rig to, to always keep an eye out for people in our community that have a need. And we have a responsibility not just to look after ourselves, but if we are strong young men um, and we see uh, an elderly woman with a, her car's not starting, I think we have a moral obligation to do what we can. We, we don't have, I mean, we're not mechanics, but if we can make a few precautions or preparations and alleviate, just pick up the slack, you know, pick up the slack. You know, the thing with the fire department, I used to get so frustrated when I worked as a career firefighter in Colorado uh, at these calls that we would call, um, well, guys would call them Bravo Sierra calls. Uh, in the middle of the night, um, maybe an elderly person, you know, fell down and couldn't get up and all of this, all of these crazy things you, that you think, you know, why are you wasting my time? Why are you getting me out of bed to come in to deal with this? And when I was complaining about it one time, my captain said something to me that completely changed my perspective on that. He said, you know what, you've got to look at this, the situation from this person's perspective. They have, le they have, they, they no longer have the ability to deal with the situation. They did everything in their power to deal with it, and they had no one to call. You know, he said, you've, you're very fortunate. You grew up in a very tight-knit family. You always had someone that you could call. You've been young and strong and physically able to do whatever needs to be done, and you maybe are projecting that onto other people that don't have those, that, that don't have the, the, the luxury i.e. elderly people. So the reason why they're calling us is that they, they've ran out of options. There is no one else for them to call and we have an obligation to our community. Our community pays our wages, they pay for this fire department, all this apparatus to, 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 to fix these things. Who else is there? They can't, the police don't have, aren't equipped to do it. EMS, is, they're not typically equipped to do with all these things. The fire department, we have rolling toolboxes. That's our job. When everything else fails and you don't know who to call, you call the fire department. I mean, that's, that's kind of what it comes to. And that changed my perspective on it. So I, I bring that forward into my everyday life as well. So jumper cables. Now, when you're looking at jumper cables, don't get the crummy ones. Man, don't even buy them. They're just... If it, get the ones that the, the tow truck drivers have. I know they're expensive. They're going to be 10 times as what you can buy, you know, your cheap departments, your, you know, or Home Depot type of jumper cables. Get the big fat ones, the ones that you can start someone that's got a diesel pickup and not sit there and have to wait at charge. I've seen those little ones melt trying to jump big stars. So get the big ones. And the other thing, get long ones. If you have a quad cab four wheel drive pickup, uh, with a, it's got an eight foot bed on it, and you know, cars have batteries in different locations now, all the, you, you just can't count on anything. You've got to assume that if you go nose to nose or to, you, that at any place that you could have enough, you have enough cable that you can cook onto your batteries and go completely to the opposite end and get someone if you were like front to back. 
So the little short jumper cables don't do you any good if you can't get to it. And oftentimes, if you get a car that's got a dead battery that you need to jump, it's nosed in someplace and you can't even get to the front of it. So it doesn't do you any good to have short jumper cables. Get long ones, 20 feet uh, is what I like. These are 20 feet jumper cables. They're super heavy duty. They're the same type that, that wrecking yards, or not wrecking yards, but um, tow truck drivers are gonna use. They're, they're lifetime cables. They're gonna be able to start any, pretty much any vehicle, spend the money and get them. In addition to that, in the same vein, is a battery charger. Now, do you need a battery charger like this that has enough power to jump start or completely start a vehicle with a dead battery? Probably not. You could probably get by with something smaller, but if you, work, if you have a homestead or a farm or you deal with a lot of equipment, you pretty much have to have this. Uh, you have to have something that will, because time is money. Unless you want to sit and wait for hours and hours and hours to get your tractor going when you need it, um, I recommend it. So get one of these, you know, I've, I've had this, is, I bought this from Napa years ago, 20 years ago, and it's been just fine. And it, it charges, what you're looking for is you want a, a, the 225 amp, amp uh, boost. That way you can pretty much start anything. So that's, that covers that. I'm gonna include those into one, definitely just, just one, uh, the jumper cables and the battery charger. This was a tough one as well. So I, I waffled back and forth between these two tools. One was an angle grinder, a four inch angle grinder and a orbital sander. Yeah, I mean, they, I, I didn't, I just don't have room for both. I had to choose one. So I would say this, I would say I would not want, uh, the orbital sander uh, is gonna take the back seat to a four inch or, or just kind of a small angle grinder. These are essential. Um, I, I couldn't live without it. You can cut paddle locks with them. You can fix things. You can grind. You can cut steel. You can cut ceramic. You can, you can do anything. That, that's what this is the thief. This is the the tool of choice for, for New York uh, bike thieves. They have these in cordless. There is no lock made that you can't burn through in seconds uh, with an angle grinder. I'm not saying that's what you should get it for, but uh, I would say so. What what are you looking for? What brands? There's lots of good ones. If you want to go premium, uh, I would say the probably the about among the best is the Metabo. Metabo are what you see professionals using. I, I've had great luck with them, but the Dewalt's, the Makita's, the the all, all the premium brands they make good ones. So I think this is a four inch. Four inch is probably for most guys is a great one. You can go with cordless. It's not a bad option too. If you're going to do light duty, it's really convenient. But if you're going to do any type of fabricating or think that you're going to be welding or building stuff, probably just go with a, with a heavier duty corded version. All right. So we have eight to go. The next is, this was a tough one too. I went back and forth between, well, not really very long, between the combination square. This is an old tool, but it's an excellent tool for so many things. Metal work, carpentry work. I use it all the time. Now, when I'm doing production framing, I, I don't carry this anymore. I carry a speed square because it's so convenient, but the speed square is very limited on its capabilities. This has more capabilities. You've got a ruler, you've got a small level on it. Uh, you've got, if you need to check uh, depths or set depths with different things, it's really good for that. Um, it can measure 45s. It's got a scribe built into it. I mean, you've, how many videos have I made where I've used this tool? I mean, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of them. Combination square. Uh, which one do you want to get? Uh, I, I've had the two that I really like. Of course, the top of the line, the premium, if you want to go the very best of the best, is the Sterrett. Sterrett, um, anything from Sterrett is pretty much top of the line, but expensive, probably around $100 or so. Whereas you can get the Stanley, or even better than the Stanley, is the Irwin for $10, $12. So either one. And, and get the one that's all metal. Don't get the plastic one. Um, these are made in England. They do, the cheaper ones sometimes do not, are not super accurate. I have got videos on how to tune these things up to make them perfect, uh, if you're interested in that. So you want to check it uh, on that. So a uh, combination square for the third tool today. And on the, sticking with kind of the woodworking theme, uh, I've decided you have to have three woodworking chisels. Um, if you're just gonna have one, a three quarter inch. If you're gonna have two, a three quarter and a one inch, ideally you're gonna have three, and that is gonna be a half, a three quarter, and a one inch. 
Now, if you're doing specific carpentry and you're, you know, a traditional woodworker, of course, you know, you're going to have to have more than that. But for the common guy, um, a three quarter inch wood chisel is going to suffice. Um, what do you want to spend on them? Uh, if you're just going to be using it in a tool bag and you're going to be using it for just really gross, rough work or cutting nails or prying on stuff, just get a cheap one. Get like a Buck Brothers or or whatever they have at Home Depot. If you want something that's a little, little nicer, uh, the Stanley 750s are great little chisels. They're gonna be more money, uh, but they're nice to use. And the vintage chisels are a good way to go too. You can restore some. The set Stanley 750, the old ones, like I've, like I've been sharing in my woodworking uh, videos are, are just head and shoulders above these, but these are still good. I could be happy with these. Better than these though, I forgot to mention, are the Irwins. The Irwins that I featured, that I included in the poor man's toolkit that we put together, the, remember that? They surpass these chisels. I was, I was reluctant. I, I, I even wanted, when I gave that toolbox away, I wanted to trade <laughs> these, these 750s for the Irwins. Uh, yeah, I, re, I remember that. I wouldn't buy these. I would buy the, I would buy the Irwins. They're cheaper um, and they are better, in my opinion. All right, so the wood chisels. What else do we got in our, in our bag of tricks here? So I also included a tool belt. Now, this might be somewhat controversial uh, for guys that don't do a lot of carpentry work, but I can only put together this toolkit for what my needs would be. And I, what I'm thinking, when I was thinking about these tools is what is it that I'm always using? What is it that I have to know where it is and I have around? And, and a guy's got to have a tool belt. Now, do you need a big full-on professional framers uh, type of tool belt like this, these Occidentals. These are the best of the best, the Occidental leathers, um, handmade in the United States. This is a lifetime set of tool belt for most guys. If you're wearing them every day, you, you're, you'll go through them, but they'll last you a long, long time. They are excellent. These, you'll hand these things down. I bought these things probably, what, 25 years ago, maybe longer, and they're still just perfectly fine. Uh, for the common guy, if you're not and the reason why I got these was because I was working as a carpenter. Um, so that's, that's why. Uh, but for the common guy, just get yourself a, just an ordinary tool belt. There's the, just the, the, the inexpensive ones at Home Depot, kind of the apron style that mount on the front. Um, if you want the side bags and a little more options, I, I would, I prefer those. I like the side bags because they, you can adjust them to your body. I don't want something that someone's kind of predetermined is going to, it's where it's all sewn together and that that's the way it's going to be. I want to have something that I can kind of move around and it could be more modular. So I would recommend you just get yourself a good belt. Uh, buy, uh, if you want to save some money, get, go to the thrift store and get a weightlifting belt. Great big, big one, about a four incher. Um, get you some suspenders because uh, that helps carry the load. Um, and then tool belts with individual pa pouches. Uh, you just, you just got to have them. It's a, such a time saver, especially if you're working up on ladders or up on roofs, going up and down, chasing tools that you should have in your pocket. Uh, just not an option. So a good tool belt is essential. Speaking of essential, also, we already featured one ladder, right? We featured the extension ladder. You have to, a guy's got to have a step ladder. Um, and you don't need to have a great big one. This one, I've got a great big one. I've got a, a, a six foot professional fiberglass step, step ladder that I use, I use quite a bit, but it's big and heavy and expensive. Um, but the majority of the time I can get by with this little guy right here. It's probably about a four footer. And I would highly recommend get, to get one that's got the little fl flip out thing right there. That flip out thing, if you're painting or working, is so handy to put tools on. I mean, whether you're doing electrical work or, or whatever you have and you're up on your ladder, you can put your drills and different things on there or a paint can. I think it's what it's kind of designed for is for a paint can. And that's really nice too. You're cutting in trim or doing things. I have this kind of carried around with me and, and I have my paint right there. It's nice. So a nice aluminum or fiberglass if you, if you want. A four foot step ladder, I think is essential. And that's why it, it made the list. Man, we are getting down to it. Well, we have two, two more things. I'm gonna have to move the, three more things. I have to move the camera uh, for this next one. Uh, no, I don't. I'll just bring, here, I'll just, I'll just show you. I have a clever way of carrying or holding my chains that I was gonna share, but I've shared that before. Okay, a chain. You gotta have a, you gotta have a, you gotta have a chain. And if you have a truck, I think that the chain should be kept uh, in the truck. 
this is, uh, how do I, how, how many things? You need to lift something. You need to pull someone out of a snowbank. Um, you need to, uh, it's, it speaks for itself. So what do you want? So you want, um, what I would say, a minimum, a 10 foot, 10, 10 foot chain is too short. 15 is a real handy size. I, I would say if I was only going to have one chain, it would be a, a 15 footer, a 15 or a 20. A 20 is pretty big. That starts to be a lot of chain to pack around, but a 15 is the sweet spot if you have the option, in my opinion. What size do you want? You want a minimum of 5 16 5 16 is, is, the, is the size of the links. I prefer, if you're doing a little bit heavier work, if you have a big pickup truck, go with a 3 8 A 3 8 chain is going to be significantly stronger, and you can pull pretty much anything out. With a 3 8 truck, you can pull another big full size, or 3 8 chain, you can pull another 3 8 uh, truck out of pretty much anything. But if you're light duty, half ton type of truck, you know, chance of you actually using it, uh, not lifting a lot of stuff, 5 16 is more handy and not near as heavy and just a little bit easier to deal with. Now for the last two, I'm gonna to have to bring you in into the shop. So for number 48, a guide, you just can't hardly get by without, you gotta have a place to store all your tools and to, and to manage them, and, and a, a toolbox, right? I've tried lots of different things, and what I've finally come down to, and this was kind of what my, this is my, this is kind of my dad started me on this path when, when he was a general contractor. He had lots of guys working for him, and they had, since they did a lot of remodel type of stuff, there's a lots, a lot of disciplines. You're doing painting, and you're doing electrical, and you're doing plumbing, and you're doing roofing, and it's a ton of tools, and they get really confusing. And when you need to go do a plumbing job, you don't need to be packing around your electrical tools, or vice versa. So to try to <clears throat> to kind of get things organized in a way that, well, I've got a leak, I've got a plumbing leak in the basement, I can grab my tool kit for my plumbing stuff and I can go, is it's the way you want to do an ultimate, that's what your ultimate goal is. So this looks like a DeWalt advertisement, it's not. This is, this is my stuff here. It just, uh, I just chose this because I, I, I like the company and I have a relationship with them. Uh, but whatever you decide on, there's a lot of companies now that are doing these modular type of toolboxes. I, I saw at Home Depot that, uh, what's the red one? The, not Porter Cable, Milwaukee has a system. Uh, Stanley has a system. What you want to do is if you can get one of these type of toolboxes that are, that are weather sealed, uh, like these, that have, uh, if they have a little grip in the top, it's handy for organization and that is big enough where you can put your stuff in when you're building your kit, if you could pretty much fit the majority of the stuff that I have shown as far as the hand tools in one or two of these. So buy yourself one and start with that and, and put your stuff together in there. And as your tools start to grow, then you can kind of expand on this. So if you, uh, for, for example, once you start, let's say you, you're getting into, you're getting older, you're getting married, and you decide to build a house or, or remodel your house, you're gonna start acquiring tools, then you can add to that. So that first toolbox you bought, it's not gonna be something that you're gonna throw away or not have need of. Maybe that becomes the carpenter's toolbox, and then you buy a second one, and that's when you start putting your electrical stuff in there. And I'm, I'm going through now, I have, because we've been through so many remodels, um, and I've inherited so many tools from, not only from my father, but from my grandfather, uh, it, it's getting to the point where it, it's hard to find everything and I've got so many things in, things in all these different locations and it becomes very frustrating for me when I want to do uh, some work. And so what I have done is I've taken the time, you know, I've tried to spend a little bit of time every day and I've collated all of the tools that I own and I've laid them out on the table like I kind of did with the hammers. And what I've done is I've made the decision, okay, do I, need, um, do I need 14 vice grips or do I need uh, 57 screwdrivers? And so what I've done is I have, um, I've, I've went through them, I've picked out the ones that I need, picked out a backup set um, that I can put in a toolbox and keep in vehicles uh, so that I'm not robbing my main tools from my shop. Uh, that could be, that could be a challenge, you know, problem as well. So by consolidating, so now I, I've, I'm solving my frustration problem for a perfect example, so I, I've got a, maybe I've got a, a plug that's out in the house, right? Um, and I need to fix it. And of course, you know, we're all busy and the last thing you wanna do is be walking around looking for stuff, right? So I know that everything that I own that's electrical is in this box. And if I get to working on the thing and I don't have it, I know that I don't own it and I need to get it, 
um, and, and it's not one of those things thinking, oh, I know I bought that thing, and where is it? And now I've spent an hour of time I didn't have and frustration looking for something I didn't have. Uh, the other thing that's nice with, some, with a lot of these kits is, is that you can kind of mate them with dividers, um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So here's the electrical box, perfect, perfect example here. So if we look inside, we're gonna have all the electrical stuff in there, right? All the things that we need. Not, we don't need to go over, over all of it, but it doesn't end there. You know, sometimes that there's wires and different things that you're gonna need as well that are not all gonna fit in the toolbox, but you want to be organized. So what I really am, what thrills me so much about these, these organization boxes now that companies are making is there, is you can get dividers as well. So now, and, the, and all of this stuff hooks together. So I can snap this on here, right? And not only am I taking all my tools with me, but I'm ta taking all the necessary things that I need uh, to get my jobs done. So inside here in this divider system, I'm gonna have my wire nuts and nail plates and staples and, and all those, you know, all those myriad of things that you're going to need um, to, to get the job done. Now, another thing to look for in these boxes is that they're also coming, uh, you can get them with these bins. Because a toolbox is not very helpful when you need to pack a 100 foot of Romex around or wires or, or large things. So one thing you can do, is that gonna do this to me here while I get the camera on? Is, uh, is add to these things, you know, bins, this sort of thing. This is super, super handy. Now you can throw your cordless drills in there, right? Things that are not gonna fit in your toolbox. You can throw big tools and, and extra batteries. This is not going well for me here, is it? You get the idea. So think about that when you're buying your toolbox system. Stick with kind of the name brands, that way they're gonna be around for a long time and you can add to them with these things and just make life a lot easier and, and uh, make, your job, make your job go better. Number 49 and it should be number one, this is the first thing you should buy right here, is a bench vise, a bench vise. Now, you can go two ways with this. There's a lot of great old ones. There's hardly an old bench vise out there that's not a good one, unless it's completely worn out. Give it a shake. You know, how worn out is the screw? Is there a lot of play in it? Be careful with that. But anything from Wilton, Wilton still makes, actually Wilton built this vise, Snap-on doesn't make these. This is a Wilton kind of a machinist vise uh, that Snap-on brands with their own name, but this is, these are wonderful. Old vintage Wiltons, new Wiltons. Now, just like so many other tools, there's lots of different quality levels of there. They're, they have your homeowner grade, and then they have your full-on machinist grade, and the price difference is huge. This is something I probably wouldn't want to skimp on. I would go to the higher end. For a good vice, a good quality vice, you're going to pay, now get ready for it, between five and $600, literally. And even the old vices, I mean, guys have caught on, they're, they're, they, they're not cheap either. Um, you can find a few, some of the best values that are out there is if you can find on eBay a Craftsman brand, a lot of people kind of take a dim view of Craftsman tools from what they have become, but I believe that that, that was made, they were made by Wilton and Craftsman put their name on them, but I've had a couple of those and they've been good vices for the money and usually, well, back, you could buy them but for a hundred and you'd be about $200 by the time you pay shipping to get that in there. What you want is a five and a half inch to a six inch vice. Don't, don't get anything smaller unless you're a jeweler, but a six inch vice, this is a five and a half um, will do pretty much anything that you need to do. Now, when you're building your vise, of course, or putting your vise in, you want to put it on a good sturdy bench. A vise always needs to be on the corner of your bench. That's for, for several different reasons. It gives you access to two sides. So you can work from here, you can work from here, um, wh whatever you find yourself doing, and you want to put it right over top of a support post. Because if you look on the back of the vise, it's got a, this is, this can be used as an anvil, a light duty anvil. You can press bearings, you can pound, you can mash stuff out there. It's designed to be pounded on like that. And that way, when you're pounding, you, and you put it right on top of a post, you're transferring that, that force into the post and it's not bouncing your bench. There's nothing worse than having a flimsy bench and you see guys mount a vise right in the middle of it, right where it's at the middle of its span, and you're working on it, and the thing's bouncing and jiggling up and down, and you can't put any, you can't, it, it's terrible. Uh, it, you want a vise to be on the corner. So I would, you know, 
get yourself, look for Wilton. Uh, if you can, there, I don't know all the names of them, but five and a half, get a quality one. Don't skimp on this. Don't buy Harbor Freight. Uh, don't buy those cheap ones. My dad bought one of those. Uh, he had, on the, I remember down in this, under his carport, and it was a great big monster of a thing. It was probably like a seven inch vice and it looked really cool. It had the rotating jaws, all of it. He was using it, I think pounding on this and the casting just broke and the whole thing fell into two pieces. Like, yeah, there you go. You know, so there's your Harbor Freight vice. So don't buy one there, get a, get a quality one. All right, you ready for number 50? This was the hardest one, but I think that I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go with it. I, I've already committed. It is a table saw. I know, I said, you know, now that I'm sitting here looking at it, what about a shop vac? Goodness, I forgot the shop vac. Table saw, shop vac. Well, we'll just lump them into one. How about that? That'll make it easy. So you have to have a table saw and a shop vac. <laughs> See, they are they are connected together. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say that these are one unit right here. Okay. Well, that makes it simple. A table saw. Uh, I think I said I wasn't gonna put this in here. That you could do what you needed to do with a skill saw. Uh, you can. I, I can't give it up. It's the tool that I use. I use it more than a chop saw, um, a miter saw. A miter saw would get honorable mention, but a table saw, it's a must have. It really is a must have. Um, what, saw, what do you need? Do you need a great big one? Well, maybe. Are you a cabinet shop? Are you gonna be building a house? Yeah, you might sweet spur spurge and get a full size table saw. But uh, this is the size that my dad had for, oh, I think all his life. I don't think he had a big table saw. Still, this is what he has. And he, he built multiple houses and did more construction remodeling than, than 100 men do in, in a normal lifetime. And he never used anything bigger than an eight and a half inch table saw. So this particular one here is cordless. Wouldn't recommend that unless you're a production carpenter type of guy, just get one with a cord. But these small, compact, lightweight table saws are worth their weight in gold. What they are is they're essentially a little tiny sawmill uh, in, a, in a box. And if you add, uh, a, a miter, a miter gauge in there, or they come with them. They don't come with very good ones, but but you can do um, miters and, and 45s, and you can do picture frames. You can do molding, a bazillion different things. So uh, eight and a half incher. Don't get anything smaller than that. Something that's good quality from a name brand. Um, the Dewalts, the Rigids, the uh, Makitas. They're they're all really nice. I don't can't really say I have experience with every one of them. I've loved this one. Um, cordless is okay. It's, I don't know. It's a trade-off. It's I, I wouldn't buy the cordless. I think. Um, <laughs> all right, the, I completely overlooked the shop vac. Yeah, shop vac. I think you're gonna have to have that too. Luckily, I had them all hooked together here, so they make one unit. Um, get yourself a shop vac uh, for cleaning stuff up, for dust control. You have uh, no. You know if it, it happens to everyone once in a lifetime. You know you break a pipe and you flood your basement. And a shop vac, a wet dry vac that you can uh, suck up water and and clean out your cars and all that. I that's a must have. You need to have it. So, uh, well, if nothing else, it gets honorable mention. So that is the 50. So let's wrap it up. So that's it, friends. That's my list for the top 50 tools that every man needs. It's a, I think it's a pretty good place to start. Um, you should be able to if you if you decided, I'm gonna buy uh, I'm gonna buy two or three of these things a month. Maybe it's a big one, you know, maybe like a battery charger or a, a table saw, maybe, you know, maybe you save up for a little bit of that. Um, as far as the priority, what, what would I do first and where would you go? It just depends. If you're more heavy on the mechanical side, if you're more prone to be working on your cars and changing oil and that sort of thing, now focus on that. But if you uh, uh, need to do some kitchen remodel or painting or you want to build a garden shed or different sorts, picnic table, you focus more on the wood side. Uh, but just remember, take your time. And, and also, one fun th thing that's really fun to do is to, is to print out this list. Um, uh, write, write it down and send yourself an email. And then one thing it's fun to do in the summertime is grab your wife or girlfriend or whoever uh, and go out and hit the garage sales and have that list in your wallet. Yeah, that'd probably be a better thing there. And pull it out there and, and check off those boxes. It's a fun thing to do. You can get some amazing deals. You could probably put this whole kit together for a tenth of what it would cost to buy retail. Um, and you might even find some other cool treasures. So it's always, it's always a fun thing to do for summer. It's one, definitely one of our rituals is to go there and, and the first thing I do is dig through the tool, the tool side and, and see what I can come up with. All right, so tomorrow, what's coming up? Tomorrow, um, I'm thinking about taking... Um, 
uh, Jack and I will be heading up to the mountain uh, to go skiing. We have a snowstorm coming up. Uh, so if you want, I'll bring you along for that. Um, so we'll have a kind of, we'll do a blog of uh, going out. We have our, uh, we have a lot of fun. Um, so I'll bring, I'll bring the camera along for that. Also, a lot of folks have asked me to do a watch review. I got a new watch, so I'm all excited about that. Uh, I've been watching um, Nut and Fancy's watch reviews, and I enjoy those. And my friend Cut Jeff Cutlery Lover, he just did kind of a watch review of his stuff, and it was fun. So I, I didn't realize how many watches I had, so I went through and all the old drawers and boxes and different things that I've had. I, I put them all together, and I was surprised that I had kind of a cool collection of watches. So if you're interested in, in seeing that, uh, just a quick EDC watch review type of thing, um, let me know in the comments, and if I get enough response, I'll be happy to, to share that with you too. Just something a little bit different. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.